Thank I'd like you. to take a moment and encourage uh, everyone to attend um, the meeting tomorrow evening and um, present these, these great questions and scenarios directly to the appropriate uh, people. Um, it, I would, I think they said, if I'm not mistaken, it's upstairs at, did somebody say seven o'clock? Yes. So, seven o'clock tomorrow night, town hall. We've got a date. It is not an open meeting. There is a public session at the end. It's not an interchange. This is a meeting of the Zoning Amendment Committee. So what time is the public session so these folks... Uh, at the end of whenever they get through. Okay. <laughs> it's, still a it's still an open meeting. Yes. Absolutely. No public input at the end. That's what, that's what the chairman had said. Okay, just so that everybody is clear, the meeting is at 7 o'clock, and there's a public session after the planning board completes their discussions. So still, be there tomorrow night if you're interested and you want to get your questions answered from the planning board. Okay? Can I ask, Tom, could you amend your agenda at the beginning if there were people that wanted to speak at the beginning of the meeting? I'm one member of the board. I can't speak for the rest. But it can be amended if, if the board agrees. Uh, if if the board the says so, that's fine. Again, ma'am, maybe that's a question right at the beginning tomorrow night that you can ask yeah. the board. But you'll be talking to a lawyer who's the chair. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Early in the evening, very early in the evening, somebody asked who signed the application for the grant? Who signed the agreement? The uh, application for the grant was signed by Selectman David Hussey, and the agreement for the grant was signed by Loring Carr. There's your answer. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Hi, I'm new here. I moved here, I don't know, not long ago. Uh, my name is Don Waits. I came from Manchester. I escaped Manchester. I escaped everything there. All right. I didn't. Um, I never. I never stayed in subsidized, hou subsidized housing, low-income housing. I worked hard. I worked two jobs. Uh, I have six grandchildren. I raised my children. I was a single mom. I'm in the National Guard. I came out here. And started I deployed. I went to Kuwait. I came back. And I saw that Manchester took a really, really big turn for the worse in that time. It got to the point to where I felt that Manchester was going to crush me. With the crime and everything there, I tried to start a business there, it didn't work. I had to get out, I came here. So I'm, look, I'm listening to all this, this is all brand new. I was invited to come here tonight and to listen. And everything that I'm listening to and I'm hearing is that we have to be very diligent so we don't have another Manchester here. I'm not racist. I love everybody, okay? But everybody has to work for what they get. Here, here. I'm Lauren Cat. My name was just used on one of the items that was, so, was uh, signed. That was as a chairman of the board, the whole board approved that. I think there's a, if everybody in here agrees, our government spends money terribly. Mm. Yes. Everybody agrees they waste, they waste $400 for toilet seats and $200 for hammers. But that isn't the issue that's coming up before us. The issue that's coming up before us is going to be whether we want the developer to come in and say he doesn't like what's in place and he can't afford to build a house at a certain rate of pay, a certain uh, value. Yes. And if he, doesn't, if he doesn't think he can, he's going to go to the court and say, I need to split the court. The lot's going to have to be at one acre. And the judge can agree with him. Yeah. Or we can say, the heck with it. We won't put anything in place. We'll lose our local control. 
You talked about earlier about local control. It's going to take me more than 30 seconds. I'd ask the audience to let me speak a little longer. It's going to take more. Either we have to have local control and decide what we want to address this. I will not be able, and no one else will be able to answer that question. You just read those items. They came from the legislature. I do not have any clue, and nobody on that board has a clue why they put in those. How can you ask me those definitions? So don't sign anything. Right. HUD did not vote for this. They, there was no, wait a minute, there was no HUD finger on those buttons down there at the legislature when that was voted in. The state legislators voted that in. They shouldn't have done it, I agree. It's terrible. I've been sitting on that CA board with Tom. Every time we go to the meeting, it gets worse and worse and worse. We're responsible for the county. We're responsible for now any builder coming in and doing what he wants versus us. That's what we're trying to do is to say, okay, this is what we're going to find acceptable. And the builder will have to accept that bit. This is, this is local control. If you, if you think you're going to vote no and this workforce housing is going to go away, it's not. No. Only way it's going to go away is the legislature right. gets it out. Right. And Jane just said, wait a second, Jane just said it's probably not going to happen because, because we have the Democratic control in that house. But it's a start. It's a start. And the people know who voted for what. But Yes, but we are still stuck with it until it gets thrown out. Do you want local control and saying, no, we're, not, we're only going to have the lot shrunk by 10%? Or do you want a, a court to decide that he's going to say, oh, yeah, half is better? Which do you want? Okay, thank you, Excuse me, but they told us last week that even if you pass something, there's no guarantee it's going to stand up in court because they don't even know what they have to write up. But so what are you going to write up? So you don't have local control. We, you think you do, but you don't. And that's what Mick Williams said you, and Whitman. No, I, I disagree. We, if we don't do anything, it's going to be up to a court. That's a choice. The heck with all this arguing and, and this great show about how oh, the government is terrible. Who disagrees with that in this room? That's not the issue. I, I would like to respectfully disagree. It's not local control. You are not retaining local control if you are being bullied to approve a warrant article. Because if you don't, then the courts will decide. Last week, the people who have a vested interest in this whole shenanigans, the people who are make, taking our tax dollars and enriching their pockets, the partners, the stakeholders, the people who are pushing these plans stood up and told you last week, you have enough workforce housing already. They told you that. You guys wanted to know how much more do we need? And they said, I don't know, but you better have more. Is that local control? Are you going to vote on a warrant article and approve a warrant article that the people who are profiting from this, who don't know how much you need, are going to write the bill for $15,000 and tell you to approve it because then you'll have local control. This is America, folks. Wake up and smell the coffee. Take true control. I was just handed this by, uh, by Mona Parole. It's a copy of the um, Planning and Zoning, Chapter 674, colon 59. And it says, a municipality's existing housing stock shall be taken into consideration in determining its compliance with this section. The people who are stakeholders have already told you, you are in compliance. At this moment. The moment the prices and values of housing change, we will not be in compliance. You'll have your chance. My question is to Lauren Carr and um, Mr. Hoops. I know you're pretty much in favor of this, but uh, and you two are in agreement. Are you in favor of returning the, the, the grant money as an effort to show that we really aren't in favor of this? No. We want the information. Why, why are you having this forum here? Why ha we are having this forum here because that was part of the grant, that we were going to have forums. 
So how much the is it man, costing? Wait a minute, the mandate, it is not costing $7,500. You're wrong on that. Oh, it's not costing a dime tonight. Wait a minute, that is incorrect. I can show you the document. It, cost? it is incorrect, your number is wrong. wrong. That's right. It is not about, that mandate is to have something in front of the voters. That's it. If you people don't want, if you don't think that article addresses this workforce housing, vote no. It does not mean you have to vote yes on that article. All we're trying to do is address something that was thrown in our laps. By who? By the legislatures, RSA. They voted down in Concord. They put their little finger on the green button and voted yes. It was not HUD. HUD did not sit there and vote. It was the state legislatures. But the town planner brought the grant to you on the board. No. And then everybody got, jumped onto it. No. Yes. The grant yes. is from I was at the meeting. Go ahead. The grant is for the planning board. The planning board put it in their budget. The money was in the planning board's budget. They voted that they wanted to do it. Because as government is set up, the selectmen have to write uh, sign off on the grant. It was the planning board's, it's a planning board's grant. So, under the public right to know law, can I get an itemized expense report on that grant money? Of course. When can I pick it up? <laughs> Go to the town hall. I think it's important to understand that the RPCs were written into RSA in 1969. That was the beginning of this wonderful idea that we could have federal you know, nudging into all of our regional planning. The workforce housing, if I'm not mistaken, came in in 2009. If I'm not mistaken, it could be January 2009. It started before that. It started before that. But this RSA here, I believe, was 2009, okay? By that time, by, you had 1969, where a, a certain ideology was out there and had plenty of time to supplant itself and it followed itself into the legislatures where now a lot of the people in the legislatures are voting because of where we came from, where we were going. Now we say, maybe we want to rethink how we're moving forward toward down this road of, you know, government can give us and fix everything in this wonderful utopia because we understand now this hasn't been working so well. So, Cong so our house has to change those RSAs. You guys have to keep talking and talking, and we have to get rid of that bureaucracy, bloated, corrupt regional planning commission. Excuse me. This is a total misunderstanding of what the regional planning commissions do. You have no concept. It's so much more of the work is actually from the towns to the Regional Planning Commission, looking for help in writing things, looking for help in designing things. They do all the printing of our maps. They do a lot of other things for the town. It's, it's a... Um, uh, it's one of the great aids to a lot of communities. There are communities that don't have planners still in this, in this state. No, they're not. They get run over restaurant, I think what you need is real, honest answers, and you're not getting them. It's moving past 830, folks. Is there anyone here that has not had an opportunity to make a comment or raise a question? If you'd like to come forward, we don't want to miss, uh, miss out on you. Nice presentation, Ken. My name's Art Lavoy. I'm from Laconia, New Hampshire. Um, I'm not overly politically inclined, um, but I am a taxpayer, and uh, I feel that um, as a taxpayer, we should be patriotic and moral about it, and I'm okay with that. When I see my tax dollars going to projects like this, or for even sea turtle fertilization or, uh, you know, <laughs> jello, uh, you know, it, it's um, frustrating. Um, I think if you go down the street and ask anybody if 
they're aware of what workforce housing is or Agenda 21 or Common Core, they'll look at you funny. Um, but if you ask them who won American Idol, they'll tell you in an instant, you know? So I think there's a, um, uh, ignorance out there and there's not many of us who are on top of things so we need to get the word out as uh, Jane indicated earlier um, the more there's strength in numbers and I think you can change anything with numbers I just want to make a, a, a comment about what your representative said here. They're going to try to address this next year in the legislature. They have sessions to listen to the public. Anybody can get up and talk. Anybody. Let me tell you something. When, the, when, the, when they do education-related things, the school lobbyists go in. When, the, when they do things related to the Second Amendment, the gun lobbies go in. Hundreds and hundreds of people. The meetings go for hours. There's a lot of people who showed up here tonight. If you feel strongly about this, give her support. Because if you, there have been issues where they had to move from the legislative office building into the House chambers because there were hundreds of people who wanted to speak. Your voices will be heard. We have a very unique state. I grew up in New York. I never knew one of my legislators, never. I must know 50 or 100 of them. And, I, and I'm like people who got up here tonight and said that they've never been politically motivated. Five years ago, I had my head in the sand. I knew nothing what was going on. Um, a year and a half ago, I knew nothing about my town government. Now I know them all, okay? I know, I, I, I'm fortunate, I'm honored to know someone like James. You have to go down. You have to get involved. You have to speak respectfully. Everybody has a right. Listen, this is America. There are people who have heard both sides tonight. That's how our government's supposed to work. Go down and have your voice heard in the State House when this issue comes up. And it'll make a big difference, if only to make sure who voted for it and against it. So then you have a more informed vote in November of next year. I'm going to take a couple more um, questions and comments. I'm Bob Daniels. I'm your newly elected selectman. Yay. As Mark. Uh, I do believe that uh, Jane could use some support. I think we, everybody should support the repeal of the workforce housing law. I don't think it's necessary. There's plenty of houses out there that are affordable. There's a lot of foreclosures, a lot of fixer-uppers. A lot of people probably in this room that bought homes and fixed them up over time. They don't all buy new homes. By, they were just built by a developer. That's right. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Crop TV.